Continuing the series on examining devices to measure AC current, this time we'll try out the CS5464 from Cirrus Logic. Here it is set up on the breadboard, but we're going to skip this test and instead build up a prototype and run AC line power through it. The CS5464 chip is really a standalone ASIC device that reads uh, multiple ADC inputs and tracks the values on its own without any external intervention. It has a built-in voltage reference and temperature sensor for automatic compensation. This thing simultaneously tracks uh, instantaneous current, instantaneous voltage, instantaneous power, uh, active power, RMS current, RMS voltage uh, for each of the channels. This is just fantastic for my purpose. Uh, I think this device should meet all the goals of identifying brownouts, voltage spikes, and current surges without lots of reads or external processing. It should really lower the demands on the main microcontroller, allowing the core processor to focus on control and reporting functions. The uh, microcontroller should only need to ping the 5464 uh, occasionally to get the necessary data. The CS5464 does indeed have a lot of functionality, but it also comes with a lot more complexity. Uh, it requires being reset properly after power up and various configuration commands must be sent to it before you can get the data you're after. We'll be implementing uh, this basic shunt test right here. So our current will come in from the phase and neutral through the shunt to a load and we will then tap off the shunt through a pair of resistors and into the CS5464. You can see that the line power is coupled directly into the chip and then the chip does its work and the communication goes out via SPI. Here's the optional isolation mentioned earlier and then it'll be off to the uh, microcontroller here. We won't worry about the pulse output uh, counters on this. Uh, it does require a crystal However, they have provided built-in uh, capacitance on it, so you don't need to put any external capacitors on. Really nice. So you just drop the chip in, drop the uh, crystal onto it, and for a lot of uh, applications, you might not even need isolation if you're not going to make it accessible. Here's the test setup for today. We have the CS5464 in the center, and it is connected to the microcontroller through a series of iCoupler devices from analog devices. We have 5 volt power coming off the microcontroller board into the 5010 and that provides isolated 5 volts out to the energy monitor. Uh, same thing goes for the ADUM uh, 7441s. Then uh, they provide the SPI and reset connection pins to the microcontroller and serial data then goes out to the PC. From the energy monitor the three ADCs and those connect to the shunt. We have AC power coming in through the shunt out to a lamp or series of test lamps through a DMM to measure the true RMS current and see how accurate we are. And that's really about it. It's a pretty straightforward circuit. Just a little bit more complicated with all of this uh, galvanic isolation thrown into the middle. All right, here's the prototype all built up. Here in the red section, we have the current shunt. So the AC will be pass through this Kelvin resistor right here. And then from it, we tap off the other side of the Kelvin leads and run it through that small circuit we talked about into the CS5464. Here's the optional isolation. Uh, through ADUM7441 chips that will provide galvanic isolation out to a microcontroller. And here's the power. The ADUM5010 which will receive 5 volts in from the microcontroller and provide an isolated 5 volts output to the 5464 as well as the AC side of the 7441s. We have a more complicated build today to say the least. Here we have a series of 150 watt incandescent lamps to serve as our load. These are connected to a switch box here so they can be controlled individually. Uh, they are all mounted to steel back boxes that are grounded. I uh, didn't have a steel deep back box for the switch unfortunately. Those then connect out to our test circuit 
and through an IEC connector. And the nice thing about that is that I can uh, test power this with uh, just a regular computer cable. My IEC cable has, here has been split out to a set of uh, spade connections. Notice that these are uh, insulated spade connections. Both the uh, male and female are both insulated so that if a uh, device is connected up and power is on, but these are disconnected, hopefully it will provide some level of protection uh, to the user, uh, me. Also, the connections to the meter are in uh, shrouded BNC uh, banana plugs. Here we have the test set up with an array of lamps for our load. Those are connected down to the Kelvin resistor here. The power will flow through the Kelvin resistor, through the shunt, and out. That will connect uh, through the meter here to measure our true RMS amperage and then connect back to the line. Acro also, across, across the Kelvin resistor, we are measuring the shunt voltage. Here, since the system is not currently powered up, we're getting a tiny bit of uh, noise and since we're in the millivolt range, this is actually 45, 46 uh, microvolts, just background noise. So let's power up our load and we're pulling 1.21 amps RMS uh, through, the, uh, through this Kelvin resistor. And across that resistor, we're measuring a voltage difference of 12 millivolts, or 12.18 uh, versus a uh, 1.21 amp. And the reason we get this is uh, this is a 10 milliohm, that's a 0 0.01 ohm resistor. And as the current flows th through it, we have developed a very slight voltage drop across that. And that's what we're measuring. That's what the CS5464 is also measuring here. So with no load, we're getting a background noise level of around 400, a little below, a little above. If we turn on one load, you can see that it has captured a peak surge current and then stabilized out at a nice, uh, we'll call it 2440 or thereabouts at 1.2 amps. We turn on a second lamp, we get 2.4 amps and 24.1 millivolts across that developed. Then from that we're getting a surge current of 44, or sorry, a big surge current, and then a uh, stable reading in the 4488 or thereabouts range. We'll turn on a third load, and from that we get three point, almost 3.6 amps. We're getting 36 millivolts, and we're measuring a steady 6500 thereabout in the counts from our current measurement. Now let's run the numbers and see how that works out. So let's check the numbers. Uh, the CS5464 provided a null output that's at zero amps with no current flowing through the Kelvin shunt. Uh, we had a reading of 395 counts uh, with an input of 1.21 amps, a true RMS, according to the meter. We re had a reading of 200, sorry, 2,444 counts minus our 395 offset, uh, calculated out to 1,693 counts per amp. When we turned on a second lamp, we got 2.41 amps with a reading of 4488. That calculated out to 1698 per amp, very linear. And then at three lamps, 3.58 amps, 6500 count, gave us a reading of 1705 per amp. So again, very uh, closely correlated. Uh, hopefully this will continue as I test it out a little later with uh, higher and higher currents. I like it. This chip is going to be great. I think this is the one to continue with. I'll build out maybe a bigger board, do a little bit more with that, and write a little more software and see how it works out. But I think this is the chip to go with.